So I've recently been completely suckered in to all the marketing and hype around 4K and uh, bought myself a 4K monitor. This particular monitor is a 4K DCI monitor, so the res on this one is 4096 uh, by 2160 rather than 3840 by 2160, which is the UHD format. And this isn't a video to say, oh, look at my new monitor, isn't it nice? And all that sort of stuff. This is running Windows 7, actually. And uh, it's on a GTX 6, 680, so quite an old card. It's, so it's basically maxed out, because the maximum resolution the card can do is 4096 by 2160, and it works just fine. The only problem is, of course, everything's very, very small and I haven't scaled anything yet. Though you can, there are some options around that. All I wanted to show you today, if you're a Premiere user, so if you're an Adobe Premiere user, I just wanted to kind of show you, well, if you're thinking, is it worth it? Well, my answer to that would have to be yes, because if I open up Premiere now, you can see that it's a completely different environment to how you can work on a standard HD monitor. And a lot of you out there might have probably already got 4K, maybe probably 5K monitors, and you're sort of thinking, yeah, yeah, we already know this. But a lot of a lot of you may be thinking, oh, I might, might buy myself one, but I'm not sure if I need it. Would I make use of the extra, extra desktop space? Well, take a look at this. I, I, this is kind of how I've laid things out. And that program monitor there, that is a full HD 1080p um, window scaled to uh, 100%. You can see there it's scaled to uh, 100%. And we've managed to have, we've got the uh, Lumetri or Lumetri or whatever window fully expanded down the side there with every option open. So they're all available. Uh, we've got a timeline which hasn't got much in it at the moment, but we've got space here in the timeline for extra, extra tracks if they're needed. Uh, we've got our effects panel down here, so we've got enough space to see what the effects are doing. And to be honest, that could probably be a bit further over here, and more and and space here to actually work on those effects and add keyframes and stuff like that. And then we've actually got the list of effects here on the left-hand side. We've got two scopes open, so we've got the uh, vector scope and the YC waveform open, permanently open. We've got multiple audio tracks in there so seven audio tracks the master or six plus the master the history window open and then the list of project files including the little thumbnail and to be able to fit that all on the screen at one time is a huge huge plus when you're working with this stuff but the biggest one of all is definitely being able to have 1080p footage at 100% all the time. You know exactly what you're dealing with, you're not having to scroll around, you're not having to scale, and uh, it works really, really well. So if I just press play. No idea what I'm playing here, by the way, I just threw some footage in. So you see, it works great. Not sure what this bought, this is some boring autumn footage from last weekend. Who knows, I don't know, it was a, uh, not really the point. Uh, anyway, so if you are thinking about 4K, uh, the 4K DCI, as I say, is slightly wider, so it gives you probably the equivalent on the right-hand side of, let me just close this panel in, about that much extra. This space here, you can see. So it, is it worth getting a 4K DCI monitor? Well, there aren't that many of them available, but it, it's nice to have because this extra space is the whole pa color panel, you know? So you, you know, you could argue that it's worth it just just for something like that. But, uh, but I mean, th uh, three eight forty is perfectly big enough. So there you go. If you are thinking about it, there's one possible way of laying out your work space. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think. Because, or let me know if you are thinking about buying one.